the Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie podcast. Always love getting this man. We're just getting him up on the line now. Indoor garden party. Well, you can go catch them. They're playing at the Bridge Hotel on the 19th and 20th of May, Friday, Saturday night. Also, they're playing the Opera House and Manning Bar at uh, the uni, which is unbelievable. But the man with the golden tonsils, Russell Crowe. You there, buddy? How would you be? How would you be? Could you ever take Ooh. over? Do you reckon you could take over from John Laws one day, Russell? I mean, I know you're close to John and he, he lived right next to you, but you think that you could maybe do a bit of talk back one day? I can see myself doing that. <laughs> yeah, but I like it with long pauses where you don't know whether the line's dropped out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, while well, you have a think about what you're about to say. It wouldn't be your sort of radio where you're filling up yeah. Uh, every part of the air constantly because mm-hmm. you don't want your audience to fall asleep while they're driving to work. <laughs> <laughs> you could do a love songs and dedications. Oh yes. What's going on with you boys this morning? What have you been? What have you been on? What are you putting your cups of tea? What's going on? Here? <laughs> oh, I we're wish. Are you there to control you, or are you by yourselves and running rampant? Yeah, no, we're on that punch that you gave Ed Sheeran. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't slept for three days. <laughs> it's going to be a good day there. <laughs> Do you know what Fitzy said, Russell? We're talking about, you know, coming along. You've got some shows coming up at the Bridge Hotel. And Fitzy said, is there any chance we could make the punch? He said, why don't I have an after party and we'll make the punch? Yeah, do you reckon Russell will come back if I make the punch? Oh, you see, the thing is we've got a show the next night. You know it's a school night, you know. <laughs> oh, yeah. So you probably have to come back on the second night because then I've got two days off. Do you know what? Screaming Jets played there last week. The Bridge Hotel, if those walls could talk over the years, oh, Russell. yeah, man. That I is... mean, look, man, I, I played there first in the early 90s. Did you really? Uh, 95, 96 through to 2001 was the last time we played there. What it about... was always a big gig for us, yeah, so I'm looking forward to it, man. What about the green room, um, Russ? Is that upstairs as well? Do you write your name on the wall, that kind of thing, or...? Yeah, I'm not sure if we did. No. Um, I, and I don't know. I don't, again, you know, man, it's been such a long time. <laughs> you can't remember. Been, anything could have happened. It could be, you know, a, a gastro pub by now. <laughs> <laughs> but if the Screaming Dead were there last week, you know, probably still a rock and roll gig, so that's cool. Well, yeah. when it comes to... I had vent- a funny night there one night, man. Yeah. I met Mal Meninga, right? Oh. We were on a, uh, a flight together, so we got talking and became mates, you know, and then told him I was playing at the bridge, you know, yeah. and he said, oh, I might turn up with a, with a couple of mates, you know, so we're playing at the bridge, and I look out into the audience and realise that, I, you know, because I'd been talking to Nicole Kidman a few weeks earlier, mm-hmm. and she's turned up, and she's got Tom Cruise with it, right? Wow. Like, oh. Well, we're playing at the bridge, and there's Tom and Nicole, and then I look over, and Mal Meninga's walking in the door, and he's got the entire Australian Super League <laughs> <laughs> and this place is already jammed. And now it's wow. got, you know, 25 gigantic rugby league players in the room. Oh, what a crowd. Cool. That is awesome. Was Ricky Stewart, I mean, Ricky Stewart was a Canberra Raider with him. I, I, I just wanted to bring up that name with you, Russell, because I don't think he's too happy with you at the moment because there are whispers that you've taken away his star player and brought him to the Rabbitohs, Russ. Well, I, I heard that on the television last night too, so we'll, we'll see if that uh, is what it is, you know? Hey, Russ, can I throw something at you? I've been thinking about this. Here we go. I, I love what you did with the book the book of feuds. I love it. You commissioned it and you chronicled all the rivalries with other teams, and I absolutely adore that because I think being a footballer myself, stuff like that is always great motivation. Have you ever thought, and maybe when your career's sort of at the end, could you bring... <laughs> end of the career. No, I I'm don't just, know where he's going, Russ. I'm just saying. <laughs> you guys are mapping out my retirement. <laughs> <laughs> Could you bring out a book of feuds about Hollywood one oh. day? Oh. Oh, I'm sure there's probably been plenty of uh, tomes already written about that sort of stuff. <laughs> Wouldn't that be that, amazing? That would be amazing. And you know what? No one else gets to see it. You commission it, you write it, but the Book of Feuds is there and it becomes this, with age, it just gets bigger and bigger and yep. everyone wants yep. everyone wants to know from that era or like, that like generation. The I, like the Wu-Tang idea they did with that album. Yes. That they only sold one copy of, right? The original concept awesome. was that they would sell the one copy and then the person that held the one copy,
coffee. We'll hold listening parties at the great museums around the world, like at the Louvre, yeah, or, yeah, you yeah. know? Yeah. And, and then the dude, the border went, I don't want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> he just dies, you know? I'm going to stream it. He streamed it. <laughs> that is amazing. Uh, write a Hollywood book of views and you have to go to the Museum of Modern Art to listen to a page being read out of yeah. it. Can I ask, Russell, when you talk about, you know, the Bridge Hotel, what is the best venue around the world that you've played at? There's there's a, a place in London called the Union Chapel. It is so gorgeous, yeah. man. It's such a gorgeous space to be standing in. What a feeling. But, you know, I've walked on a lot of stages, man. I've You know, I've sung on stage at Carnegie Hall. I've done... Wow. Uh, I did Royal Albert Hall. Yes. You know? I've become mates with Elvis Costello. Yeah. He heard... <laughs> I was doing Les Mis at the time. Mm-hmm. I was shooting in, in London. He heard I was around. So he just sent me an email going, listen, man, I'm on at the Royal Albert Hall... I want to sing uh, Trouble, the Elvis Presley song with you, and I want you to do the Folsom Prison Blues. Oh. And I was like, yes. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so my I got God. I've walked on the stage at, you know, Full House at Royal Albert Hall as well. But, yeah, that venue in London, the Union Chapel, it's pretty special. Oh, then. What about Canberra for Groove in the Moo? We saw that with Amy. And obviously, oh, yeah. you know what? Amy got up with you uh, in the Indoor Garden Party. So uh, an amazing thing for you to do to go and support her when she was performing, Russ. Mate, that was fantastic. It was a pretty funny moment, though, because <laughs> the backstage and she's like, I'm going to introduce you and you come on. And I'm like, we're doing the song Psycho, right? So the yep. male voice yep. doesn't come in to one minute into the song. Yes, <laughs> yes. I'm like, hey. You introduce me, I come out, I stand there scratching my nuts for a minute. <laughs> it's probably not the coolest option. You know? What am I going to do? And, and I said, so why don't you, you just start the song, and I'll just walk out and start, you know? Yeah. And she goes, yeah, but, but what if people don't know it's you? <laughs> and I'm like, well, you know, they might. Uh, <laughs> you don't have to say my name. But if you want to say something, say, are you not entertained? Yeah. <laughs> wow. She, she said, just to make sure people know who you are, can you come out as Maximus? Is that okay? <laughs> <laughs> I might actually end up doing that again with her somewhere down the track, so you've given me an idea now. Yeah, oh, well, there I you go. It. Love, mate. It. This is great. And, you know, so, Russ, it's the Bridge Hotel, Friday 19th of May and Saturday 20th of May. That'll sell out really, really quickly because, I mean, the Bridge is an amazing venue, but you need to get your tickets quickly with that one. Sydney Opera House is going to be amazing, Russ, Friday 9th of June. And, I, mate, I've seen so many bands at the Manning Bar at Sydney Uni. That is such a great space for music. That's Saturday 10th of space, June. Man. We know how busy you are. We, we appreciate your time, and I cannot wait to read the Book of Feuds, the Hollywood edition as well. well. We'll do that next time that you get on, Russ, so commission that straight away. <laughs> we love you, mate. Thank you so much for your time. Cheers, gents. Always great to talk to you. Have Thanks, fun. buddy. See really appreciate up. it. Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie is a Nova podcast. For more great comedy shows like this, head to novapodcast.com.au.